Hey everyone, this is Nick, and if you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know I've been burned by Linux tablets before. But this time, I can confidently say that this is how you should do a Linux tablet. Open bootloader, open default OS, open specs, great ARM CPU and well supported as well, and a plan to open all drivers, firmwares and specifications in the future. And also open Segway to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare and Alma Linux. Alma Linux is an open source enterprise Linux distribution, which is completely binary compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux and CentOS, pre-CentOS stream. It's owned and governed by the community, and it's supported financially by Cloud Linux and other sponsors. While you can use Alma Linux for free on your servers or desktops, Tuxcare offers a range of services around it to ensure that you get live patching without any reboots or downtime, as well as 24-7, 365 support, so you can manage your fleet without any stress. So, click the link in the description below to learn more about Alma Linux and Tuxcare's support options. Okay, so what exactly is this thing and how well is it built? This is the Fide Tab Duo. It's a prototype for now and it will be released at the end of their Indiegogo campaign, which is already fully funded and should start shipping in January 2023. I'm usually not a fan of crowdfunding campaigns and this time is no different, but this hardware and this device really has a lot going for it. So I'll let you watch the review and I'll let you make up your mind on whether you like it or not. The tablet is 12.3 inches with a QHD display at a resolution of 2560 by 1600, so it's 16 by 10. It's not an OLED display, but it's actually really good and bright at 500 nits. It's enclosed by relatively big bezels, but for a tablet that size, it gives you a good grip on it with some space for your fingers, so it's not that bad. It is a heavy boy at 755 grams and 1.3 kilograms when you attach the accessories, as in the kickstand and the keyboard, which we'll talk about in a minute. The Fight tab is powered by a Rock Chip 3588S, which is an 8-core ARM CPU with 4 performance cores running at 2.4 GHz and 4 efficiency cores running at 1.8 GHz. It's coupled with a Mali G610 GPU, which is also pretty decent, as we'll see in the video. It has 8GB of DDR4 RAM and 128GB of eMMC memory. And on top of that, you get a nice aluminium build with a headphone jack, a USB-C port that supports fast charging and DisplayPort, and you get a slot for microSD to expand the storage, and for a nano SIM card if you want to use a cellular connection. You also get Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 4.2. And it also embarks a 42 watt hour battery. And the battery life is definitely quite impressive, with 10 hours of YouTube videos playing in a loop over Wi-Fi at 50% brightness. Really not bad for a tablet, especially since in idle mode and when it's suspended, it really sips power. I left it completely unattended for about 24, maybe a little bit more than that, 24 hours, and it only used up 5% of its battery life, which is really good. With that, you also get a run-of-the-mill webcam, which also doesn't seem to know in which orientation it's supposed to be in, a decent enough microphone for video calls, and dual speakers that actually sound really good. You also get a power button, which doubles as a fingerprint scanner, and a volume rocker. Now, this hardware is really, really nice. It's not lightweight at all, think Surface Pro 3 levels of heft and weight, but honestly, it feels extremely solid, very well built. It inspires confidence with every single detail, especially with the kickstand and the keyboard attached. It's heavy as a laptop, but it also feels really, really well built. And what it embarks inside is also no joke, because that ARM CPU is four times more powerful than what you would find in a Pinebook Pro. Now, the FightTab Duo comes with everything you need to turn it into a Microsoft Surface clone. There's a magnetically attached back that has a kickstand with some very strong magnets and a keyboard that uses pogo pins and charges off the tablet's battery. My review unit came in red, but there will be a grey option as well. Both have a felt-like exterior and a soft-touch plastic face where it touches the tablet. 
The kickstand feels super sturdy with a very solid hinge, but I wish it could be angled more so you could use the tablet in a more flat manner for drawing or annotating documents. The keyboard is decent, with a bit of flex, of course, much like a Surface keyboard, but it's definitely usable. The keys have decent travel, although they're in the Chrome OS layout, so you don't get a super key and you have some weird function keys. It also has a touchpad that is fairly small, but pretty smooth and efficient, with a solid click, even though it's resting on that flexing material. The whole keyboard can be laid flat or magnetically propped up against the tablet, exactly like a Surface keyboard. Oh, and you also get a stylus with it, which uses quadruple A batteries, and it also works really, really well with a low latency. It's not on par with an Apple Pencil or a Samsung S Pen, but it's really not bad at all. It's a very good selection of accessories, and it already inspires way more confidence than what the ThinkPad shipped with the box, and even in terms of hardware build quality for the tablet itself, it just feels more sturdy, more solid, more hefty, but also a lot better in the hand. And also all these accessories will come in the box if you buy this tablet. Now, enough with the hardware and let's talk software. The FightTab Duo runs Fide OS out of the box, which is a degoogled version of Chrome OS. It's free of charge, but you have paid for options for support or remote device management, stuff that will be more interesting for companies, basically. By default, it has an end user license agreement and a privacy policy that lists the data it collects, although it feels like it's only telemetry data, and you can either use it with a FIDE account that lets you sync all your apps and settings across devices or when you reinstall, or you can just use a local account that doesn't have these sync features. The FIDE account thing felt weird to me, especially when they asked me to use Telegram to verify my phone number instead of just sending an SMS, so I went for the local account. They also have OpenFide, which is the fully open source version of FIDE OS that you can install on that tablet, but you can also install it on any other computer if you like. And while it's based on Chromium OS, and as such has various UX problems that I listed in my Chrome OS Flex video, it is still much better than Chrome OS Flex, notably because it has Android app support baked in, with the ability to add Google apps in one click from the store with full Google Play Store access. Android apps ran pretty well for me with decent performance, but there is one big glaring issue with video playback. Anything that is supposed to play video just won't. And that's a major problem, especially if you want to access video streaming services. Other applications worked well. I installed Alto's Odyssey to try out how a game would run. I tried a few others and they performed Perfectly. GPU acceleration is here, performance is great, you can absolutely play Android games on that thing and run any app that doesn't require video. You can also sideload APK apps like FDroid and other applications, of course. And like Chrome OS, it can also run Linux apps in a container that you can also install in one click from the developer options in the settings. And the performance there is also decent, although much lower than what you would get on a native Linux install. It's a Debian container, so everything is relatively old in the repos, but you can also install Flatpak and Flatpak apps. I tried Krita with the stylus, and while it works, it's definitely not the best experience you could hope for, with stutters and not the best responsiveness, and the stylus is lagging behind. It was the same on a laptop running Chrome OS Flex, though, so it's not specific to this tablet. It's just that the Linux container is not speedy. The on-screen keyboard also doesn't work on Linux apps yet, apart from the terminal, so you will have to use the keyboard add-on that is shipping with the tablet. So yes, it can run Android apps and it can run Linux apps, but in both cases, the experience is not perfect. Now for the Linux thing, they can't really do anything. It's a container, it's never gonna be speedy. For Android, I guess a few app updates or a few system updates might be able to fix that video playback issue and make this a pretty interesting tablet. Now, generally though, the performance of Fide OS is pretty great. Everything is reactive, whether you use the touchscreen or the keyboard. The OS runs fast and smoothly, it boots up insanely fast, and it resumes really, really quickly. And you have plenty of web apps that you can install from the Fide Store, the Chrome OS Store. It is a very serviceable OS on a tablet. It adapts well enough for keyboard and mouse, and for touch, it's really fluid. Now, I really did not enjoy Chrome OS Flex when I used it on a separate laptop because the UX isn't great, 
and it's basically useless compared to a normal Linux distro. But on this tablet, since you have Android app support, it makes it actually a pretty great OS for a tablet. But of course, the real appeal of this thing, if you're like me and if you're a Linux nerd, is the fact that it has an open bootloader. You can install other operating systems on this. And for now, as of testing on the prototype, I had the choice for four OSs. I had FIDOS, I had OpenFide, uh, the open source version of FIDOS, I had Debian 11, and I had the Android open source project. I went for Debian 11, and it runs pretty well. Installing it isn't too tricky either. Now, the experience on Debian felt all right. The keyboard, display, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, suspend and resume, GPU acceleration, everything worked well. And the battery life wasn't too shabby either. Although it is worse than in the default FIDOS. It lasted for seven hours in a YouTube playback test instead of 10 hours on FIDOS. And the touchscreen doesn't work, which is a bummer. And the default Debian image is in Chinese and I could not figure out how to change the language, which made it really, really hard to use. It's not a bad experience, but it's obviously early days. Of course, it is not the distro I would have picked. I would have preferred using Fedora Workstation and GNOME on that tablet. That feels like a way better fit for a touchscreen than XFCE, but there are no images for it just yet. I don't know if this tablet will run any distro that has an ARM version or if an image has to be made specifically for it. What I'm sure of is that I really, really do hope that they release more distros for this thing once it's out, because I would love to use a well-adapted to touch desktop environment on that thing. It would feel great. So I was really impressed by the FiTab Duo. It's very well built. It has a great screen and good speakers. The accessories are really nice and useful. And the fact that it will actually be able to have any OS it wants, once other OSs are developed or at least have support for it, that's very, very cool. The OS it ships with, while I'm not a fan of on a laptop, because basically Chrome OS Flex sucks and any Linux distro will be better because it will be able to run web apps and have a better graphical experience than Chrome OS, on this tablet, with Android app support, Linux app support, and web app support, and a very fluid operating system, I think it's a hit. I think it really works well. Of course, Android app support isn't perfect, and no video playback for now, if it doesn't get fixed in the future, is a big miss, because for watching streaming services, using the browser will be less battery efficient and less comfortable than using the dedicated Android apps. For anything else though, even games, it's going to be amazing. Now the end user license agreement and data collection also ticked me off since I don't know much about this company. I don't know if I can trust them or not. Now you can still pre-order the Fight tab through their Indiegogo campaign, currently at 570 euros for the whole package, and it should ship in January 2023. Now I'm not going to tell you whether you should back that project or buy one or not. The decision to trust this company is yours. They didn't sponsor the video, they didn't pay me a cent, and I have to send the tablet back once I'm done with it. But honestly, what I can tell you is that if it ends up supporting a full Linux distro, I'm probably buying one. Still, it's a crowdfunding campaign, and the last time this happened for a tablet was for the JinkPad, and it was really crappy and ended up dying without any support, and now it's just a big paperweight, unless you want to install Ubuntu Touch on it. So the decision on this one is yours. But if what you're looking for is a Linux laptop or desktop, not a tablet, then this sponsor segue is for you. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany and they make laptops and desktops that ship with Linux out of the box, which is inherently way more clever if you want to run Linux than buying any old Windows devices and praying, hoping and researching to find if it's gonna run Linux correctly or not. When you buy from the link in the description below from Tuxedo, you know that Linux is going to run on your device and everything will be supported. And they have a big, big range that will suit any price point, any use case, whether you need a tower, a small form factor PC, a cheap laptop, a super powerful workstation, laptop or desktop, they have it. They're all upgradable, repairable, customizable. You can have your own keyboard layout laser etched on your laptop. You can have your own logo laser engraved at the back of the laptop. They're just really good. So if you need a new device, you want to support Linux development, and you want to make sure that your device actually runs Linux, no doubt, click the link in the description and get yourself a laptop or desktop from Tuxedo.
So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, you can also dislike and tell me why in the comments as well. And if you want to support the channel, there's a super thanks button underneath this video on YouTube. There's a PayPal link in the description. And there are also links to my Patreon page and to my YouTube memberships. Both get access to a weekly podcast every Monday where I talk about tech, Linux, open source, the channel, my personal life, some hot takes, everything. And you also get to vote on the next topics that I'll cover on the channel. If you're interested, both links are underneath the video. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.